Let us pray. Almighty God, from whom every good prayer comes, give us the spirit to praise you and thank you and call upon your name, that our hearts may be warmed within us and our minds enlightened. Grant that we may worship you now in beauty, truth, and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. 
But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent. According to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. O Lord, open thou our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and a great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as they owned lands or houses, sold them, and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. reading from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, 
and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So here we are on low Sunday. <laughs> Doesn't seem low here, but last Sunday was kind of full. We moved through the building tension of Lent, interrupted briefly by the Dillon Mass into Holy Week, and finally to this explosion last week of Easter. The music, the flowers, exceptional worship on every level. Now we settle into the Sundays that follow. In the past years and in other churches, it was the tradition that the senior pastor worked through Lent to Easter and then went to Florida. Take a rest. <laughs> he tried that last time, and it, uh, he hadn't figured this out. I mean, he's, you know. But as one who's been in a number of roles as an assistant priest, I was often left to be the preacher on Low Sunday. And that's all right with me. This text for this Sunday is often one about the apostle Thomas, and he is my favorite apostle. Cynic that he appears to be, I can most identify with him. In the Lutheran process to ordination, the last step after you finished your classwork, got your degree at seminary, and secured your first call to a parish, you had to meet one more committee, and their vote could determine your future. I've since sat on some of those committees and I've watched votes deny people. Well, I had my call, I had my degree, my bags were packed, the meeting was going well. I was becoming a peer among peers on the brink of joining the community that there was a warm sense of welcome into what in 1970 was basically a fraternity. And then came the last question. Out of nowhere, somebody asked, well, do you believe in God? And I paused and said, yes, most of the time. There was another pause. The vote was taken and I was accepted. In retrospect, 
as unexpected as my answer was and as spontaneous as it was, I think the answer was one that each member of the committee would have declared in their most honest, honest moments. <laughs> they didn't want to open that up for discussion. <laughs> Thomas the Doubter. He could have been called Thomas the Brave, Thomas the Absent One. Early in the story of John's Gospel, Jesus receives word that his friend Lazarus is quite sick, near death, and then comes the word that in fact he's died, and Jesus decides to go visit Lazarus and the family, and the disciples were upset in rebellion. To make that trip meant that Jesus was at risk, too close to Jerusalem. There were already threats being made on Jesus' life. It's Thomas who steps forward in the midst of their rebellion saying, let us go with him that we might die with him. Fully engaged, his courage leads the other disciples. Now, they, what they had feared has happened. They came into Jerusalem, palms waving, Hosanna sung, and then a betrayal. And finally, crucifixion. All hope is lost. The gospel tells us today that the disciples were locked in a room afraid for their lives. All but Thomas. One authority I read suggested that Thomas was so grief-stricken that he wanted to be apart, to be alone, suggesting that he mistakenly walked away from the community when he most needed the community. I disagree. I have no doubt that Thomas was grief-stricken. He was clearly a close follower. He had been there from the beginning. He left everything to follow this path. But he doesn't seem to be the type to hide his grief. He seems more to me to be the type that would say, well, this story's finished. It's time to move on. Go see what's next. When the disciples seek him out, the word about Jesus' appearance, he doesn't question it. He returns with them to the room, and when Jesus invites him to believe, he answers, my Lord and my God. He is back and all in, my Lord and my God. No more doubts. Let's go forward. Today's collect had these words that it was a prayer for those of us who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body, that we might show forth in our lives what we profess by our faith. That prayer would have had real meaning for Thomas. He left fish to follow Jesus. He witnessed the miracles. He heard the parables. He picked up the baskets of bread left over from feeding thousands of people. He was there through the building tension. He could see the danger that was ahead, going to Jerusalem, the march toward death. He was a witness to the death. His faith is challenged, and he walks away for a moment. He leaves community. And then he's drawn back in. My Lord and my God, he returns to the fellowship. So, where does that leave us 2,000 years later, listening to these ancient stories, marching with our palms two weeks ago, having our feet washed, watching the altar strip, the light carried from the altar, and then Easter Sunday, a great relief. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. But what about Monday morning, after the lilies have been delivered, the alleluia sung, it's time to go back to work, back to a life in a world that is often not friendly, negotiating nuclear destruction, driving in this morning, NPR is talking about 33,000 little kids that are in a prison camp somewhere, Palestinians encircled by ISIS, anticipating death and destruction, religious wars, concern over global issues, air, water, food, unemployment, deadlines to meet, products to produce or sell, 
Life outside these walls can be brutal. Death and life, sickness and health. It is another place where the experience of Thomas comes into play. At one point, Jesus is talking about what he sees coming, his sense that the end is near. And Jesus is reported to have said, in my house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you and the way you know. Thomas interrupts. He declares that he does not know the way. And Jesus looks him in the eye and says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Thomas does not hold back. He asks the tough question. And the answer he gets is direct. How many times have Randy and I read that scripture as we stood by the crypt with those who grieve? Jesus says from the beginning that faith is something in this moment, not something in the future. It is in the face-to-face -face confrontation. It is in the community that forms to celebrate this good news and to support those who are in grief and facing loss. Thomas was invited to touch the wound. He doesn't need to. He has looked into the face of Jesus. My Lord and my God. We don't have that opportunity. What we have is the chance to see Jesus in this community that gathers here Sunday after Sunday as we meet and share the peace, as we walk from this place into a world of many different faces. The kingdom of God is now we come to Sunday after Easter. We stand with the disciples in a locked room. We meet the man who radicalized his faith. Jesus says, feed the hungry, comfort the grieving, visit the sick and those in prison. And he invited us to love our enemies and to do good to those who despise us. In those moments, those faces, we can respond with Thomas, my Lord and my God. Amen. Peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us stand and recall the ancient teachings of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Kneeling, let us pray.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And do thy ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. Let thy way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery hast established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, who has made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and did send thy blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near, grant that people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee. Bring the nations into thy fold. Pour out thy Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of thy kingdom through the same they, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for the sick this morning, for those in need, and we lift up to you, dear God, Radcliffe Anderson, Tiffany Klaus, Ginny Cohn, Lee Danby, Catherine Alexander Disharoon, Marguerite Ellett, Carlton Fuller, Linda Haas, Ashley Bloomer Kolitz, Earl Erlaine Magnum, Mark Putney, Lucy Ross, Jenny Scherer, Susan Silek, Charlie and Johnny Lou Terry, Betty Whitehurst, Joan, Patricia, Nate Sewell, Dean Agnes, Joseph Botolato. We ask your blessing, dear Lord, on the marriage of Tucker Bayless and Wyatt Deal, 
who were married here yesterday. And we give thanks for the birth of Ayir Mayan, son of Awok and Mayan Deng, who was born last week. We pray for the children who will be baptized at St. James's next Sunday. Roser Go, Miles Greenwalt, Richard Grant Ricard, and Anna Sidner. Let me give you thanks for those who celebrate their birthdays today. Bernie Niemeyer, Dawn Siegel, Kara Butcher, Jack Lee, Lindsay Crittenden, and Gillian Robinson. In the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, we remember Bob Albright and Jack Bowling, who died recently, and J. Harvey Wilkinson and Letitia Nelson Wilkinson, in whose memory the flowers at the altar are given. Please join me for the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, St. James's. Welcome to all of you on this first Sunday following Easter. We're so glad that you're here today. Special welcome to any of you who might be visiting with us. We're glad that you're here, and to all those who join us by way of our broadcast on the internet, we are glad that you're part of our community today. There are so many wonderful things going on in the life of our parish, although um, the school year is wrapping up and we're running into um, the spring, there's still lots of things going on. I call your attention to the great article on the front of your chimes about our hospitality ministry and the wonderful work they do as well as all of the opportunities listed inside your chimes. Next Sunday, um, we are going to have a wonderful guest speaker. Uh, Dr. Tony Vitello will be speaking next Sunday in Valentine Hall, and his topic will be the developing teen brain. Tony Vitello is a wonderful therapist and an expert in young people and teenagers, and he'll be here speaking with us. And then I will be leading a, a workshop on marriage, the second of a two-part workshop. I did the first part today, second part next week. And you'll be doing the gospel and current events again next week, all during our Christian education hour. Wonderful things coming up. The Diocese of Virginia is sponsoring a concert at St. James's. They asked us, Bishop Shannon asked if we would host this event. It is a diocesan event, but we are hosting it. And it will be Wednesday, April 15th at 7 p.m. So hand your taxes in and come relax at 7 p.m. The group is called Magnificat, and they are a world-renowned choir. They are absolutely fabulous. 7 o'clock, it is Magnificat. There is a $25 ticket charge. The diocese 
is trying to recoup a little bit of their costs. But um, you can buy tickets on the website, and I think you can get them at the door as well. So come be with us on Wednesday, April 17th. Please note all the other announcements in your chimes. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to Thee, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly Thine, utterly dedicated unto Thee. And then use us, we pray Thee, as Thou wilt, and always to Thy glory and the welfare of Thy people, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia.